welcome to the Synthetic Electron 3D channel. Today, I'm showing you a DIY fan adapter that lets you swap in high quality aftermarket fans on your 3D printer, even if they run a different voltage than your stock fans. Some of these premium models like this Noctua offer a better performance to noise ratio and far better durability than relatively low quality fans that come from the factory. I'm installing it on my recirculating auxiliary fan shroud for the Centauri Carbon, but it works on just about any printer. Most 3D printers ship with fans that are serviceable, at best. They can be noisy, inconsistent, and they don't always hold up over time. If you've been printing for a while, you've probably got a box like this. A mix of stock fans, random spares, and aftermarket upgrades. The problem? They're not all the same voltage, and the connectors don't always match. This DIY adapter solves that. It lets you run premium 12 volt fans like Noctua or full power 24 volt fans without hacking up your wiring. Depending on your setup, it may mount cleanly inside your printer. In my case, the shroud I designed for the Centauri Carbon has a spot for it. In the sponsored follow-up, we'll make a refined PCB and enclosure that can mount neatly in just about any printer. I kept this build simple and compatible with the stock setup. For the fan connection, I went with the most common option a 2-pin JST-XH, so it works with the fans that ship on most printers. For the input and output on the adapter itself, I chose a 4-pin JST-XH connector. That means you can run this board in line with a stock fan enclosure just by adding a 4-pin cable like this one that I made. That way, you can drop in an aftermarket fan while keeping the stock look and the same firmware control you're already used to. The output voltage is selected with a jumper that connects to the high side or the positive side of the circuit, since the fans are controlled by the low side or the negative side by a MOSFET on the mainboard. If you wanted to, this design could be adapted for 3 or 4 pin PWM fans, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Today we're focusing on the most universal plug and play option for typical 2 wire fans. This first version is built with an 80 by 20 millimeter perf board, just a simple grid of holes. It works fine for a prototype, but without a silk screen you have to remember exactly which pins and pads are which. That's one of the big things a proper PCB will improve, clear silk screen labels for every connector and jumper, so there's no guesswork during the install. The PCB will also give us proper mounting holes and clean routing so it looks like it belongs inside the printer instead of a science fair project. Before installing, I set the buck converter to 12.45 volts for the fan I'm actually using here, an old Antec I had in the parts bin. I originally planned to use the Noctua, but the one I had was just too big for this spot. The trim pot is small and easy to bump, so after verifying the output with a meter, I lock it in place with a drop of hot glue. That way it can't get nudged out of spec without me noticing. You could even set it to 5 volts for low voltage fans, or to any custom voltage if you want to intentionally underdrive a fan for noise control or special cooling requirements. Before putting it in the printer, I bench tested the adapter with a few different setups. First the 80mm Antec fan I'll be using for the install, and then a 4020 blower. Finally, I got to the stock fan enclosure with the stock blower and case fan. With the jumper in 12 volt mode, the aftermarket fans run smoothly and quietly. Switching to 24 volt pass through gave the stock fans their full factory power. The jumper makes it easy to match whatever fan you're using without rewiring or breaking out a soldering iron. And there's a little wrinkle with this setup. The buck converter needs its own ground reference. So I had to make a wire to run from the chassis ground point across to the adapter. I started by measuring about 12 inches of 24 gauge silicone insulated stranded wire, enough to reach cleanly across the chassis. Then I removed the plastic sleeve from a crimp connector, since I'll be soldering it later anyway. After that, I cut and stripped the wire and crimped it into place. Normally, that's where I'd stop, but for extra security, I wanted to solder the crimp, and that didn't go so well. The connector was sinking too much heat and the solder just wouldn't flow with the iron. So I broke out the big guns. A butane torch. Sometimes you just need more fire to get the job done. After that, I crimped and fitted a single pin connector onto the other end of the wire so it can plug straight into the adapter board. Now it's time to install the reference ground wire. First things first, I made sure the printer was powered off. 
You can get shocked if you try this live. Don't ask me how I know that. With the power off, I unscrew the existing ground point in the right hand corner of the chassis and add the ring connector I just made. I had to carefully replace the spacer and washer which is a little fiddly in that tight space. The reason I'm using this point specifically is that it's clearly intended as a standard ground point for the printer. Its purpose is unambiguous. The screw doesn't have paint on the end so you get a superior ground connection. That said, you could attach it to a closer chassis ground point if you prefer. To route the wire, I used a pair of angled forceps or locking precision pliers to fish it behind the fan shroud. I could have just removed a couple of screws to make it easier, but honestly, I was too lazy for that. With the ground reference sorted out, it's time to install the adapter board itself. In my case, I mounted it to the side of the auxiliary fan duct, but the exact location isn't critical. Anywhere secure with enough clearance will work, as long as your cables are long enough. The input comes from the combined auxiliary case fan rail, which is a 4-pin JSTXH cable from the mainboard. That plugs straight into the adapter. The ground reference wire connects to its single-pin header. On the output side, there are a couple of options. First, a dedicated 2-pin header that always delivers 12 volts, but is still controlled by the printer's auxiliary low-side MOSFET. I set this up near the duct and for a 12-volt aftermarket auxiliary fan. It's even possible to use standard 2-pin fan plugs in the 4-pin socket, though if you try to squeeze two side by side, it's a tight fit. Alright, let's wrap this up. Here you can see the key areas of the board. The buck converter with its trim pot locked at 12.45 volts, the jumper banks that let you pick between the 12 volt and 24 volt on the 4-pin output, the always 12 volt 2-pin output for the aftermarket auxiliary fan, and of course, the single pin reference ground connection we just added. This DIY version works, but it's definitely a prototype. In the next video in the series, I'll be taking this design and turning it into a proper PCB with silk screen labels, mounting holes, and a case. That way it'll be a universal drop-in for just about any 3D printer. I've also dropped links in the description to the products and tools I used in this build, the connector's wire, and even a torch if you need one. And for completeness, there's also a link to the circuit diagram so you can see exactly how everything is wired. If you found this useful, or you've got ideas for the refined PCB version, let me know in the comments. I read every one. And if you want to see how this design evolves, subscribe so you don't miss the follow-up. To close this one out, here's a quick time lapse of the printer running with the adapter installed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.